Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people say that the road to a million dollars is the hardest to obtain. But once you get there, it's going to open up a lot of opportunities for you. A lot of doors for you to make you very, very successful. And although I believe that this is very, very true, I personally think that the path to a hundred thousand dollars holds a higher weight and importance because it helps build the foundation to your character, your work ethic, and most importantly, it helps build the foundation to how hungry you are to become successful. And although I believe that there's a million ways to make a hundred thousand dollars, my goal in this video is not to list every one of those ways. My goal in this video is to give you my story of how I made my first $100,000 and hoping that my story helps resonate with you and helps you achieve your financial goals as well. So let's go ahead and uh, start. So my story begins in the most unordinary and also ordinary way possible because I was uh, born in Afghanistan, raised in Russia, and then when I was 10 years old, I came to the US. So, so those big major changes in life were a little bit unordinary, right? A lot of people don't have to go through major moves and live life in three different countries, two different continents. But it was ordinary because I followed a very cookie cutter path once I came to the US, right? Go to elementary school, go to high school, go to college, and try to get a corporate job and just move up the corporate ladder. That's what I was told by a lot of people. That's a lot what a lot of people followed. And I thought maybe this is the only way to success. I really didn't have a lot of people in my family that were business people, that were entrepreneurs. I didn't really have anyone to look up to, you know, to be like, okay, I need to do what this person does. Both my parents are educated. My father is a doctor. So education was really, I would say, pushed on me, right? So they, they made sure that I went to university. But, but I feel like deep inside, that's not who I wanted to be. Deep inside, I had this, this need to become entrepreneur to work for myself, to build something of my own. I think it was around the age of 16. I don't know what, what clicked. I don't know if this was like biological personal development. I don't know what it was, but I remember making a decision. I promised myself more like that from this day on, whatever I want in life, whatever I want to become in life, I need to be able to obtain that on my own. I cannot go to my dad. I can't go to my mom to tell them, hey, guys, I need money for a MacBook. Or guys, I need money for this. I need money for a new car. I never thought that they were like a wall to me, a personal financial backup to me. So I thought whatever I needed, I needed to obtain that myself. And if I cannot obtain it, at this point, I do not deserve that. So that led to me just having a lot of various odd jobs, from cutting my neighbor's grass and just like, to moving up to Subway, the sandwich shops, and uh, working at Subway is just probably one of the most horrible jobs that I've ever had to then going over to Starbucks. I was a barista for Starbucks for almost three years. I can make you any coffee that you want me to make you. I know all the ingredients for Starbucks. So comment section below. Let me know if you guys need to know how to make a certain drink at Starbucks. I remember one day I was working at Starbucks and one of my friends came and we're about the same age. He comes and I'm wearing this green apron, making coffee. He comes suited up, looking really nice. Um, and I was like, dude, where do you go to, you know, where do you work? He's like, I work at this bank nearby. I was like, no way. This guy has a, bank job, that's crazy. Why can't I have a bank job? So this mindset that I had of, you know, somebody else is doing better than me. Why can't I be in that position? Why shouldn't I be able to get a job that this dude has that I want? So like every bank possible in the city that I live in, I applied. And finally, I got one call to come in and interview to be a teller. And I went, I got the job. I finally became a teller at one of the banks. And I remember I was so happy. I was like, I can finally, I get to wear a suit and a tie to work. I feel like I finally landed my real big boy job, even though it's not really that crazy, but it still felt nice. So I was 18 years old when I landed my first bank job. And I remember I felt really, really good, but I needed two things. I needed to get a car because I didn't really have a car. And I needed to get a lot of like suits, things that I didn't really own because I used to work at Starbucks and I needed money to do these things. So, and the car that I had previously was my brother car and it was a really cool car. I felt like the shit when I was driving this car, but I knew that it wasn't my car. I knew that I wasn't really uh, following my promise that I made to myself of whatever I need, I need to obtain that myself because even though it's my brother's car, even though me and my brothers were just like, we're, we're very close, we, sh we share everything. There's no, this is mine, this is yours between us, right? But I just felt the need that I needed to have my own car. So I went on Craigslist and at this point I had made almost like five, six thousand dollars from just tips and, you know, working at Starbucks. So I had cash saved up. So I remember finding this Mitsubishi Eclipse um, on Craigslist. So I go and buy the car. But the only problem was that the car was a manual and I do not know how to drive a manual. But I was like, you know what, man? I need to, <laughs> I need to get this car. It's a really good deal. I finally go and I get the car and somehow through a burnt clutch, almost getting into like five accidents, pulled over by the police like nine times. I make it home with this car, but I slowly taught myself how to drive a manual vehicle. So at this point, I'm in the banking world, I'm 18 years old, and I'm a teller. Now, I remember one of the days I'm working at the bank and this customer comes with his son, and he says, whose Mitsubishi Eclipse is that in the parking lot? And I was like, it's mine. And I had absolutely no idea why they're asking about this car. It wasn't even like that nice of a car, which is a really cool looking car, but I wasn't driving like a Mercedes Benz or a Ferrari for them to be like, whose car is that? But 
I guess they're really interested in the vehicle. So I remember they asked about the car and I was like, it's my vehicle, it's my car. And the son is like, dad and the son, and the dad asked me, he's like, would you ever be willing to sell it? And I'm thinking to myself, no, why would I sell my car? But then I remember buying that car for 1300 dollars, which I got a steal. It was, I think it was like a, only like a seven, eight year old car at the time, didn't have that many miles. And it looked nice, right? It was just like a clean looking car. Again, I wasn't interested in selling my car because I, first of all, I need a car. Second of all, I was just like, you know, like I don't even know how to do this. I've never sold a car. I don't know what the process would be like. I don't even know how to get home. So I just threw a number. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I bought this vehicle for 1300 dollars. Let me just throw a number out there. I was like, well, I mean, how much would you guys be willing to offer? He's like, how much would you be willing to sell it for? I was like, $4,500. And I'm thinking for sure this dude's gonna be like, no way. Like that's way too much for this car because I bought it for so much less. I'm assuming that's what the vehicle is worth. I don't know anything about the car market at all or how much cars are worth. So I'm just throwing a number out there. The dude is very interested in buying my car. And all of a sudden he's like, sure, let me and my son go out there, have lunch, talk about it, we'll come back. I'm like, okay. So they go and I'm thinking, no way they'll come back. No way they'll come back. Within like 20, 30 minutes, they come back and they were like, would you say cash? Like, well, we're willing to buy this car right now. And I'm thinking to myself, how do I even do this? I call my brother, I'm like, bro, I'm like, I just sold my car and I just made $3,200. And that in itself is just such a beautiful moment in my life because I was like, dude, I can do more of this. I don't even need this banking job. I can do like, <laughs> I can work here part-time and also sell cars on the side as well as, as a part-time side hustle. So that kind of started that for me because I sold my car, I called my brother, I'm like, yo, pick me up. As soon as he picks me up, I, I go back on Craigslist and I'm looking for cars left and right. And this kind of started this like buying and selling empire for me, right? On the side of me doing my bank job at the age of 18, I also started buying and selling cars and at the same time going to university as well. So I'm a full-time university student, I work part-time at the bank and at the same time I work part-time as a business owner of buying and selling cars on the side and it was good because the money that I would make from buying and selling cars was a lot more than I was making at the bank but the reason why I work at the bank is because I thought maybe this is something for me to build up my resume for the future. I don't know how well I can translate the buying and selling thing onto my resume so I was like you know I need to do this as a side hustle. I never became a full side hustle. I went to a point where at the age of 18, I also moved up the banking ladder as well. I went from teller to banker to almost a branch manager. I say almost because on title, I was not really a branch manager. I was an assistant branch manager, but I did everything that a, that a branch manager would do. At the age of 21, I had all of these obligations, right? Full-time university student, assistant branch manager, and also buying and selling cars. And I paid off my university tuition loans from just literally the side hustle of me buying and selling cars. That later translated into me buying uh, space, it was an office space, it was a couple of parking pots from a, uh, an actual dealership and a dealer tag from this dealer where I operated fully as a sub dealership pretty much and I had my own LLC and I had my own car dealership, my own name and everything and I did that on the side and I made a good amount of money. So at this point I am 21 years old and I'm selling cars, full-time university student, full-time branch manager almost at a bank and I'm making decent money for myself, right? Paying off my student loans, I live a pretty good lifestyle, you know, buy whatever I need, whatever I want, and I can save money on the side too. And I think at that age, I had saved up maybe closer to like 20, 25, $30,000 from just doing this thing. So at this point, I'm 21 years old and I have $30,000. So at some point during my tenure at, uh, at the bank, I was like, you know, I need to make a decision. I need to either quit the banking or the car gig because it's a little bit difficult to sustain both and manage all three while also being a full-time university student. So I remember the day where I finally was done with my university. Um, I made a decision. I was like, dude, I was like, this is crazy. I made a decision. I was like, you know what? I need to quit the bank job. As amazing as the job was, as much respect that I got from clients, the bank themselves, I was like, you know what? I need to leave this to be able to build something of my own. So I still did the car thing on the side, but I remember at that time, one of my friends had a kiosk at one of the malls here and he was selling drones and like RC vehicles and cars and he was making decent money from doing that. So I was like, what if I open up my own kiosk as well? And the problem at this point was that I needed to sell a product. What product do I sell? What can I sell that's gonna do really, really well at this kiosk at the mall? I remember I was going through one of my social media platforms um, and I see a video of somebody drawing something in the air. It was like 3D printer, but a pen. I was like, yo, this is a really cool device. It's a really cool concept. What if I sell this at the mall at my kiosk? So I hit up one of the distributors in China and I signed something with one of the distributors and I get my first package. I go to the mall, I sign a lease, three month lease from Black Friday all the way up to January 31st. So I wanted to have this product during the holiday season because I knew that there was gonna be a lot of foot traffic at the mall at that point. And it did really, really well. And the other thing that helped me as well is my job at the bank. I was 
client facing every single day. I was with customers every single day. I was with customers that had a hundred dollars on their account or with customers that had seven, eight million dollars in their account. So it really taught me how to talk to people, how to communicate with different types of individuals. I was really bad at communicating. I was awkward when I grew up, right? I just, I was, I was the guy that would avoid people or classmates at grocery stores because I did not want to have a conversation, right? I was, I was a big time introvert. And then that this, this job and just communicating with people led me into becoming a selective extrovert, right? Where I want to talk to people. I wanted to get to know how people made it in life or you know, just being really well at communicating, talking, which equates to being really good at selling. So I did pretty good. You know, I sold this, these 3D pens and printers and uh, you know, any 3D device that we had at the time at the kiosk and I did really well. And from that gig, the three months, I believe I made around $30,000 in profit. So minus my investments and everything that I invested in this business, um, plus 30K that I had on my own. At this point, I'm around 22, 23 years old and I have uh, 60K saved up. So the kiosk gig was finally done because January 31st was my last lease. And I knew that I wasn't really gonna be able to sell this that well because the holiday season was over and the mall didn't get that much foot traffic at the time. I was like, you know what, man? I don't wanna be a kiosk business person for the rest of my life. I need to move to something else. So I remember at this point I had to make a decision. You know what, man? I have this degree. I, what do I do with this? I need to use this. You know, I don't know if I wanna be an entrepreneur all my life. So I jumped around a lot. I was always a side entrepreneur. I was never a full-time entrepreneur, right? I needed some sort of like a backup because that's just what was taught to me. You know, my parents and like everybody that I would talk to would always say, you know what, you have a degree in, edu in education, you need to work at a corporate job. You need to have an actual job to that promises you a paycheck every single week or two weeks. That way you have a steady income coming in. You don't really need to, you know, just jump from business to business. This is more of a way for you to have financial freedom and comfortable lifestyle. So I remember at this point, I'm like, you know what, man, let me give this corporate America a try. And it took me almost like, six or seven months to land my first information technology job because that's what I studied. I studied information systems and it was so difficult because I had absolutely no experience at all. You know, I'm a dude that went from a Starbucks to the bank to owning my own business, trying to get a job in IT right now. And nobody in all these IT jobs required like seven years of experience from school, which makes absolutely no sense. But I was like, you know what? I need to do something about this. I need to get into the IT world. I remember I landed my job in IT and I pretty much just hopped around. You know, I knew that staying at one company would not promise me a higher raise in income. I would have to jump from one company to another to be able to, you know, ask for that raise. And I did that. I went from making, I think my initial salary was around 65K, moved up to $85,000 and then to the six figures. And that IT job, I think from the age of 23 to like 25 is when I made my first 100K. I, I saved up from there, right? I was just like saving up money. My lifestyle was really not in a way where I was with friends all the time or spending a lot of money on things that I didn't really need. So I was good at saving up, but at the same time, good at living life too. I wasn't the dude that did not live life and just saved up. So I lived a comfortable lifestyle. I hung out with friends, not every single week, but certainly had a very, let's just say, entertainment filled lifestyle. I made sure that I was not ever at a point of my life where I would be like six years old and I would wish that, man, I wish I had lived a happier lifestyle and not cared so much about money. I remember at some point I made, I made a checklist of how much I need to spend per week to be able to save up. Um, but also at the same time have fun. So it's like these things that I did where I was a little bit more programmatic. So it's that discipline that I instilled within myself from a young age of just being independent and just being very uh, success hungry that helped me you know, achieve some of the things that I achieved in life. And I'm not saying in any way that at the age of 25 having, or 24, 25 having $100,000 saved up, or having 100K in my accounts is me successful because there's also people that make millions at the age of 18, 19, right? So there's always things that you can compare, people that you can compare yourself to that do better than you. But also a lot of us don't have $100,000 at the age of 24, right? So a lot of people can't obtain or achieve that. So, so it's very relative in a way. I remember one of the days where I was driving down uh, the highway and I was gonna go see one of my friends and I'm just thinking about it, you know, it was, it was nighttime. I realized that in all my accounts total, I had over $100,000 in cash. And it was just such a happy feeling. I was like, yo, like I didn't even know that I had this, but I was really happy to know that I was able to achieve a, a landmark, right? 100K is a pretty high landmark that a lot of people that want to be successful achieve. And then from there you go to a million, 10 million, 100 million, so on and so forth, right? You have, you have bigger dreams, but that 100K helped build that foundation for me, helped me 
build in into this person that now is able to communicate, to talk, understands how the business world works, understand how money works, right? And I remember I was so happy and like I had this rush of happiness and I made a phone call to my, my little brother who's at this point a broke college student going through med school, right? And no way was I bragging this in his face, but I was like, yo bro, I was just really happy. I was like, I have, uh, guess how much money I have? He's like, what do you mean? I was like, guess how much money I have in my savings or in all my accounts? He's like, how much? And he threw a very low number. I was like, no bro, I have, I have $100,000. I was really happy because both of us shared that happiness together. And that goes to show that if you really truly put your mind to it, you can achieve it as well. So yeah, making a decision and sticking to your decision, working odd in various jobs and actually building a lifestyle where you're not spending way too much money on things that you don't need, but saving at the same time as well. And just not being content on one source of income, having side hustles, work on things on the side as well. For me, it was buying and selling cars. For me, it was the kiosks that I built. I've also done Amazon FBA. I was, I've done a lot of different businesses on the side that made me money and you know, a little money here and there as well. But uh, the road to 100K was a very, well thought out road for myself. And I made sure that whatever decision I made, I followed through with it. I'm hoping that my story and how I made my first hundred thousand dollars resonated with you all and helped you uh, get a better understanding of what maybe what you need to do to obtain your first 10,000, 100,000, even a million dollars, right? I think stories like these that we share to each other help you get a better idea of what you need to do to be able to obtain your financial freedom. I'm rooting for you all and I wish you all a lot of success. As always, thank you for watching. Hit the like button, comment whatever questions you have down below or join the family by subscribing to the channel. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.